Well, one of the most important things in getting started on our project with the T51 Mustang is having the right tools. And we are very fortunate to have as one of our sponsors, Aircraft Tool Supply. And before we took all of the uh, tools that we had uh, both before the project and also during the project uh, in cooperation with Aircraft Tool Supply, before we took these tools, and just started uh, using them and they got all over the workshop. We wanted to take a minute and uh, go through them, kind of an unboxing video, just to show you what we thought were some of the most important tools to be getting when working with aircraft tool supply. And uh, it all starts uh, really when we talk about putting things together with this kit. The T-51 Mustang is assembled largely using pulled rivets, or as most people uh, think of them, as pop rivets. And we're gonna be putting literally thousands of those in. And so we have from Aircraft Tool Supply this heavy duty pneumatic uh, rivet puller, which is uh, a really, really great tool, has a vacuum container here. We're obviously going to be demoing all of these tools as we use them. But in terms of taking a quick peek at this, this came uh, with a whole case, uh, uh, everything that you need in order to maintain it and hook it up, etc. But we are looking forward to using this. It's heavy duty and lightweight, which is a really great thing as well. And while we're talking about pop riveting, there are a couple other things that we also got. There's gonna be some uh, situations where we have to do some very close core riveting. And uh, in order to do that, there's this very special one, which is technically the pop riveter. Um, and as you can see, this has a very uh, small clearance nose section. And this tool uh, is uh, a very, very cool. This is an actual, by the brand, pop riveter that's uh, available through Aircraft Tool Supply. And then the uh, last one in terms of riveting that we have is uh, this tool, which is uh, a rotating head. So that if we have to be able to go in uh, in this direction or in a more traditional way, this will allow us to get into some very versatile spots as well. So that's riveting. But before you actually go in and rivet, then some other things you need to do. And one of them is to actually go and drill the hole. And so that is uh, your drill becomes one of the most important things that you can have. And so we got a very high quality drill from Aircraft Tool Supply. This particular drill is variable speed, goes up to 4,000 RPM and is available with more than one type of chuck on it. Uh, we've installed on this uh, a hand chuck similar to what you would have on like a battery powered drill that you can do without a tool. But it also came with a traditional Jacobs chuck uh, with tool as well. So now we talk about the process, right? So we're gonna be drilling holes and in order to do that, we have high quality drills uh, here from Aircraft Tool Supply. We've been exceptionally happy with the way that these work in the past. Um, they really hold up well. They're very, very high quality drills. And I think high quality drills are a hard thing to find these days. Uh, you go into local big box stores and, and a lot of them are really junk from China or other countries overseas. And uh, these are very high quality uh, cobalt drills that, that last. Another thing that we did is we got from them a bow lube. Now bow lube is a product from Boeing that uh, is uh, available. This is a particular uh, uh, case that allows you to put a drill in, lubricate a drill, but most people don't think about lubricating drills and uh, uh, countersinks and other things. It does make a big difference when working, especially when doing a lot of holes to be using proper lubricant. Another uh, product that uh, we have as part of this is a micro countersink. This allows us to go and um, to take this, you set it to a very specific depth and it goes and, and countersinks. And we have the bits available for that uh, as well. So going around here now, when we go and we prepare these holes, the next thing we have to do is we need to clean them, deburr them after that gets done. And we've got a couple really interesting tools here. Um, these are not cheap, but they are extraordinarily helpful. Uh, these are, it's called a deburr master. It's a deburring tool that's two ways. So the tool is right here, and it's pretty hard to see it probably unless you look up close, but what this is, is it has a spring-loaded cutting edge. And what you do is, as you're going into the hole, this is spinning in your drill chuck, and it is deburring the outside, but then because it's spring-loaded, it pops down and through, and then on the way back, deburs the backside. So you can do that going in and back, and we have this in sizes for both the uh, 332 as well as the um, uh, as well as the 1 8 holes that we're gonna be doing. This will be saving us a lot of time. Not an inexpensive tool, extremely high quality,
but these babies go for about a hundred bucks a piece and well, well worth it um, in terms of uh, how much, how often we're going to be using those. So now another kind of thing that's a very important tool that we'll be using here are um, these strap duplicators. Now a strap duplicator is when you're putting a sheet down and you have a hole on one thing behind it but you want to match drill through. You drill the holes that you have first on the back side and then you can put your sheet up. It has this locating uh, uh, little knob right there. That locator goes into the hole, this goes around the sheet, and then this is a hole that you can use to center your drill and match drill that hole straight through. So different sizes, strap duplicators, and that makes a big difference in also in this uh, uh, getting going. Another thing that we have here, uh, it's hard to see here in the background, but we have uh, a, a bench dimpler. Uh, bench dimpler, is what's going to allow us when sheet is not large, when you want to have a countersunk uh, fastener, if the sheet that you're using is thick enough, you can actually countersink it, as we talked about with the micro stop countersink. Um, if you can't do that, you have to use a technique called dimpling. And dimpling actually kind of bends the metal, it curves the metal in order to do that. And so we use this large tool here in order to actually put a sheet in. You rivet through here, you put these countersink um, uh, and dimple dies that fit in it, uh, and then you're able to do that with the sheet. Now, things get complicated well. There's a lot of specialty tools that we need, and that's why we're working with aircraft tool supply. Sometimes you can't get the sheet off in order to do that, and you need to get into tight quarters in order to do your dimpling. And so we have this very unique tool that is a, a pop dimple die tool. This is basically a nail that has these dies, a male and a female die that you then put in place and you use your pop riveting tool, something like this, and you pull it and by pulling the male and female die together, it dimples it without being, having to um, be able to take this off and put it in a tool fixture or anything like that. So uh, very, very good. So now, Okay, we've got our holes, we've got it deburred, we've got everything ready to go. Now we're getting a lot closer to being able to assembling something. And so what we have to do, we have to hold it in place. So, Clecos, Cleco clamps and Clecos are our next thing that we're gonna talk about. Now a Cleco is this spring-loaded tool that you go and uh, you put into a Cleco clamp, you press it down, and you get this, this thin protrusion that comes out there that goes into the hole, and when you release it, it then pulls the two things together in a temporary clamped fashion in the same way that it will permanently when you actually go and you, you put the pop rivet into place. We're gonna be using hundreds of these, and very, very important tool. But sometimes you just wanna sandwich some things in a small clamp. And so we have these very cool clamps also from Aircraft Tool Supply. We use the same uh, tool in order to do it. And then when you clamp that down, that opens that up and then you let it go and it clamps it uh, back down. Those are available both in these long grass versions as well as these uh, tighter grass versions for tighter uh, locations. Another way of clamping is to use these spring tools right here. These pop open like that. You put it along the sheet, clamp it down, holds it in place. So another tool there. Now, you saw this for using dimples. This is a very traditional, uh, uh, you know, clamp that you would use as a Clico clamp, and it doesn't. It kind of very very loose. So that can actually start to cause problems uh, if you're doing a lot of them at a time. And Aircraft Tool Supply has this very cool spring-loaded one, and that we were very excited to get our hands on because we know we're gonna be using them a lot. And I can tell you firsthand that, that the quality of this is fantastic. It's, it's very comfortable on your hand. It doesn't have the bare metal. It's, it's got a, a comfort grip. And then it allows you to just keep moving and moving and moving. And because it's spring-loaded, it stays against your hands and doesn't kind of fall apart afterwards. So this is also a really, really great tool that we're happy to have on board. 
Now, moving along, there's a couple other things that, uh, that are important as we uh, looked at what types of tools do we need. And the other thing are these things that are going to be used for uh, flanging. So flanging is sometimes you want to have a lightning hole or something like that in a piece of aluminum or sheet. And you want to go and bend the edge of that so that it has additional strength and doesn't have the sharp edge directly at 90 degrees. In addition to that, sometimes you have sheets that overlap. And when you have a sheet that overlaps, what you really want to avoid is it kind of sticking out a little bit or not being in a position where it, um, uh, where it would be nice and tight. And so one of the things you do is if you can take the edge of that sheet and bend it just a little bit in, as I'm doing with my hand, just take it and bend the edge just a little bit in, it'll push itself against that sheet. And then when you're riveting along that edge, it's nice and tight. And there's a couple ways of doing that. We have um, a couple tools. We have this tool here, which uh, sets an edge called a joggle tool here, available hand joggle tool from Aircraft Tool Supply. And then we also have this tool right here, which has these two nylon wheels on this disc, very comfortable in your hand. And it allows you to take along a sheet, put it in and pull it along the entire sheet, nice and smoothly, and do that edge we talked about that kind of pulls that edge in. So um, another really, really great tool that uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of uh, throughout this build. Okay, two more items that we thought were really important in order to get here as far as our kit build. Now, one of the things is we're going to have to be punching some holes here to pass through tubing, to pass through electrical wiring, brake lines, things like that. And so uh, we need an easy way to be able to do that. And some of those uh, holes are going to be quite large. And so we got this really cool uh, quick punch set from Aircraft Tool Supply. Uh, this is a complete set, as you can see here, that uh, includes these different sizes from a half inch all the way up to uh, two inches. And uh, each one of these comes out, and I'll put this down to show you. So each of these comes out and has essentially a die of both a male and a female here. So you put this concave uh, part here, and then we have this cutting piece. The cutting piece gets set, a bolt goes through and pulls these two together and cuts this precise, very, very clean hole, even in heavy gauge uh, metals. And so uh, that's going to be extremely useful. And one of the areas that that gets used is in our firewall. And behind there, we also are going to be passing through our fluid lines for the radiator cooling fluid. Those are big lines, and this is going to help in doing that. Moving on, um, the last thing is that there's quite a bit of surface prep that ends up happening. And Aircraft Tool Supply had this very cool kit for uh, surface prep all in one. And uh, this particular kit here, as you can see, includes this mini uh, surface prep grinder. Uh, very, very cool tool that's simple in order to take this and then this kit comes with this huge variety of different discs. Each one of the discs has a quick connect that just spins on uh, to this uh, uh, to this grinder uh, tool and it's so light and simple to hold that it, it frees up your other hand in order to be able to do that uh, and steady the piece. And so this is going to be very important in terms of prepping materials in order to use the adhesive, painting, all sorts of things where we need to knock an edge off something. And so uh, very much looking forward to being able to use this tool. So again, this is basically just an overview of uh, some of the things that we've gotten from Aircraft Tool Supply that are going to make uh, this project really buzz. And I would be remiss if I didn't actually go and mention one other thing. And uh, that is uh, the safety glasses. Uh, safety is a big priority. It should be of anyone. And it should, uh, certainly is a big priority of ours. And we found that uh, Aircraft Tool Supply had these very inexpensive but very high quality eye protection glasses. These safety glasses have great visibility, very, very inexpensive. We're able to get a bunch of them so that everyone on the team is taken care of. So from the Social Flight T-51 Mustang build, I'm Jeff Simon. Thanks for joining us on this, and we'll see you soon while we get to work with all these tools. Take care.